Come right on in. You're it, Father Fish. Nice to have you with us. Take on it. And then yeah, go ahead. Fish, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, they can make them. They can make a bunch of little ones. They can make one teeny one. It doesn't matter the size of the nest. They can still, you know, spawn and and hatch fry. They don't have to have this. You see these wonderful nests on the internet, and they're all layered, and they're just amazing. But it doesn't have to be that to to hatch for those eggs to hatch out. I've had them hatch where they drop down. They can't keep them in the nest for whatever reason. They'll still hatch, and then they'll put them up. So that's my take on it. What's yours? Yeah, that's right. The, the reality is that once they pick up the egg, <clears throat> which starts to fall very slowly, right. once they pick it up, they, they coat it with, uh, with a lighter than water slime, I guess, or air right. or whatever. And, and the egg will then float relatively well. So they, while, they, while they need the bubbles to hold the eggs up there, uh, the eggs are helping. They're doing their part as well. Uh, they're, they're pretty light, as you can imagine. They're nearly not much more than the density of water, so they don't sink quickly. They're not like a stone. <clears throat> um, and yeah, the nest can be any size or no size. I've seen them breed with just a, a few little random bubbles. Yep, me and too. As, they, as the eggs are laid, they'll build more nests. But generally, if you want to breed them, the best way to do it is to uh, to float the female, but set up the male in a, in a container that preferably is an older container, at least a gallon. Uh, bigger is better, five gallons, 10 gallons is okay. Uh, beyond that is unnecessary and, and really too big. A five gallon, 10 gallon, a one gallon jar with a lot of plants in it and, and a really dirty, mulmy bottom. That's really important. If you have a dirty, mulmy bottom, then those babies, when they start swimming, are going to be able to find food right away. You will need to feed them, but that early food is critical, and it's tinier than brine shrimp. So unless you're prepared to feed microworms or develop a paramecium culture, you really need that early natural food in the tank for those babies or they won't survive the first two to three days. After a couple of days, they're big enough to take baby brine shrimp, but for the first two to three days, they're not. Uh, so it's worthless to try to feed it to them because they can't eat it, they're not big enough. They can't get it in their mouth. They may try and you may have a few succeed, but you're not gonna keep, you're not gonna keep the whole herd you're not going to keep the the entire shoal of of babies, so uh, yeah. And and the other thing is, do not try to feed until the fish are free swimming. And this goes for any baby fish that are hatching. Uh, obviously, vaporous fish, live born fish, are able to feed immediately. Uh, but for most other fish, not all. And I'll explain what I mean. For most other fish that hatch after uh, the egg is laid two or three days before, they are not able to swim. We call them wigglers. They lay on the bottom and they 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 just kind of wiggle. And you can, if you look at them under a microscope, you can see a big yolk with this little tiny sliver on top wiggling and they're absorbing that yolk and continuing to develop. It takes two to three days then for them to use up that yolk to complete their development and to begin to come up off the bottom swimming. Once they do, they need food. Right then, that day, they and not the next day, they need food that day. Now I talked about an exception. The, there are and there are more than one. Gobies, gobies are an exception. Most of the gobies will hold their eggs. The eggs will remain in the nest for weeks 
up to a month because the eggs develop into full bloom ready to eat fish that are that that have absorbed a hundred percent of that yolk sac and when they catch up they are ready to go typically those babies will shoot to the top and stay there because that's where that's where the bulk of the infusoria is right at the top of the water whether it's salt water or fresh water and they will feed instantly on on uh, on that water if they don't have food the day they hatch they will not live through to the second day they need to have food within hours so if you're trying to hatch out uh nemo clownfish for example or any of the uh the freshwater gobies they need they need very tiny food they're very tiny fish they're not big they cannot eat baby brine shrimp that's much too big for them they need infusoria they need copepods or, or something comparable to that very, very tiny, microscopically tiny food. So that's my story about all that. <laughs> Chevy Fish, I'm sure, will have something to say here. Sure. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, the big thing is, like you said, I mean, really, you know, the, the beta does it himself. He's going to take care of all the babies. He's good, but you need to make sure there's something in there for the baby to eat. When he yeah, he can't job. feed them. He can't yeah. feed them. You can't right. feed them dry food. No, they want live food. Right, no dry food. Yeah, dry food or... won't work at all. Now, a little caveat there. There is a food that a lot of the farmers are now using. Uh, it is golden pearls the five micron size, yeah. which is about the size of, of a grain of dust. It's yeah. about that size. If you've ever, if you've ever looked through a window with the sun coming in and you see dust in the air, that's about the size right. of five microns. My um, experience is they don't eat that, but maybe it works for you. Uh, I've tried it. It's there are a lot of them that don't. Yeah. There are fish that don't. There are a lot of yeah. fish that do. The bet um, baby bettas wouldn't certainly eat that. Probably not. Yeah. yeah, they need live food. Yeah. Um, the uh, the knee the gobies uh, don't they don't go after yeah. it. There are some baby fish that trigger on movement. They have right. to have something right up on their yeah. nose right on their nose that's wiggling and they'll grab that right. they're not going to grab something floating by they're going to grab something that's wiggling they trigger on motion on movement uh but again not all baby fish are like that a lot of baby fish like the baby tetras um uh all of the uh, all the little the the little fish the tiny fish like the tetras they uh they don't trigger on motion. They trigger on whatever's in front of them to yeah. bite. They'll just take anything in. But it is a good food. It's a very good food. If if your fish will take it and eat it, it's yeah, good. exactly, exactly. Yeah. The research is interesting with the with the clowns, for example, the clown gobies. What they found was that in every hatching, there were one or two of the babies that took the golden pearls out of the entire clutch, one or two ate them and, and matured. I mean, got past that first developmental yes. stage out of hundreds, one or two would eat it. I would say you'd probably have that same kind of luck with a, with a big you know batch of betta fry. You might get one or two that would take that and eat it, but overall, they're not going to make yeah, it. That's an interesting point because the other thing about that that's fascinating is with the baby bettas, if you do not feed them, if you depend on the natural food, the infusoria right. that's in that tank to feed them, you will get a handful, right. two, three, four, five, that'll survive. The rest will not no. um, because it won't be enough. Food exactly. to, 
to go around, essentially. You got a hundred hungry mouths. It takes a fair amount of food, even though it's microscopic, to yeah. be able to meet their needs. So the 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 uh, only the strong survive. You know, which, the is, which is nature in general, survival of the Well, place. yeah, that's right. And it should I mean, it should still be that way. You know, after all, why do you think why do you think they have hundreds, sometimes thousands of babies? They don't that there's no expectation that they're all going to survive, none whatsoever. In fact, for many fish, none survive. The 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 average the average survival rate. Here's a good example: sea turtles. I was just sea, thinking about them. Yeah. Were you really? Yeah. Sea turtles. Okay. Sea turtles lay in in a in a in a uh, a hatchery. There may be a hundred thousand eggs <clears throat> in that hatchery. There will be millions region wide of that specific species, whatever it is, leatherback, whatever. Hundreds of thousands of eggs. What they need is replacement population. Now, they only breed, they breed once a year, they lay one or two sometimes three clutches. Um, the expectation, the demand, I should say, the biological demand for maintenance of the species is that that turtle that lives to however long it lives, 50 years, let's say, must replace itself and its mate with two survivors in order for that population to be to be able to survive so that turtle that's laying 50 to 100 maybe 2 to 300 eggs a year for 20 30 40 years how many is that 10,000 eggs 10,000 eggs only two need to survive for that population to not go down. This is averages, of course, yeah. but it just gives you an idea of, of what the reality is of breeding populations of animals that have very large numbers, mm -hmm. very large numbers of babies. There is no expectation, in point of fact, no demand. In point of fact, if the majority of them survive, they would overwhelm other populations oh, yeah. of animals with their numbers. <clears throat> there are, after all, swarms of birds and fish that come to certain locations at certain points in the calendar, certain times of year, in order to feed on the hatching well, of that's the, what the, the, the turtles. It's a primary food source. That's right. Circle of life. So, it, 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 to, to, to draw a little bow in this, don't give me any uh, of this. Oreo advice. Rodriguez tried to raise serpent tetra babies, failed every time. Yeah, you got to do, you got to do live food. Get microworm, microworm culture. That will solve the problem for you. It's easy to maintain, easy to raise, and it will provide the food that they need at those at that earliest earliest stage. It'll yeah. it'll get them over the hump of that first week or so. It will. They are yeah. tiny little buggers, and they really the need food. Of, well, the benefit of the microworms is you can put them in, and they don't die right away. They live for typically a day or two so they won't foul yeah. the water and they can feed on them you know for a yeah exactly yeah micro room easily available i could do i could put that on my channel too i can you sell should. i can sell micro room culture yeah you should a lot of people do you know. if um, you're getting eggs then you need to do that well, I hope you found something you've never seen before. Have a great day. Nice to have you with us. Come on back. <laughs>